Good evening. It is July 22nd, and it is Google Rocks number 42, and we have a very special guest today from Connecticut, our first uh, guest from Connecticut, and she's not, she is, it's actually Wednesday, her time, 1 a.m., and so we'll excuse her if she has any brain pauses or anything like that. <laughs> um, and her name is Annabelle Howard of Big Fun Education. And also on the side there is Chad Nakapui. Yay, Chad. Chad <laughs> is <laughs> Chad is um, usually a regular here, but uh, and we're glad um, that he's back. He trains. Um, Chad, tell us who you are and what you do, and then we'll go to Annabelle. Um, I'm a technology integration specialist for the state of Hawaii. I work on our one-to-one -one, um, pilot deployment for the state, and I do a lot of Google training. A lot as in a lot. It's an understatement. Chad is always busy, and um, chances are anything that's happening in the DOE that has to do that with training, Chad is there. So um, definitely an important person in the state, for sure. And Without further ado, I would like to introduce Annabelle Howard, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of Big Fun Education, um, and um, which is an umbrella organization that um, she'll talk about. We're going to talk about three different things today, her Big Fun Education uh, umbrella organization, uh, Mac, uh, Macbeth Goes Social, which is a really cool project, and also Reading Without Borders that she's hoping to get some action from us to get mm -hmm. uh, this thing going. So three different things. We'll see how it goes. But first of all, Annabelle, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and then tell us how you came about um, creating Big Fun Education and tell us a little bit about what it is, please. Sure. Yes, thanks for having me. Um, I'm a little spacey. I am in Connecticut. It's 1 a.m., <laughs> so we, let's get that really straight. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Big Fun Education is a nonprofit, and uh, we've been going since 2009. Um, and I've been in educational publishing and teaching, seems forever, many decades. Um, trained as a teacher in England, taught in France, taught in New York City, and uh, and I've been writing. Uh, when I was a teacher in New York City, I came up with the idea of adapting classic plays and then teaching. I was a fifth grade homeroom teacher, and, and then I taught pretty much the entire curriculum through a classic play. Um, and I documented what I did because I had such I have such a bad memory. Uh, I had to write everything down and then it turned out that the other teachers when I left that school said oh oh could we do that when you when you leave and so I sort of had the beginnings of a, of a publishing project and um, so that's sort of how things started um, then I uh, in oh, when was that about 2007 I think um, I created what I called a motivational online community um, exclusively for Connecticut. We had about 70,000 kids in grades 3 through 8 using it. And um, it, was, it was test prep before test prep was a dirty word. <laughs> and it wasn't prepping for the test in the, in the deadly way. Um, it, was, it was more creative than that. Um, and it really motivated kids to, um, to continue to go to the next level. We had scoreboards that were live and ranked kids by how hard they were working. And we reliably uh, raised test scores. We got sponsors and kids got prizes. We did laser tag parties for the top 10 in each grade. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then budgets got very, very tight, uh, you know, in the education world. And uh, so we created the, the non-profit. And um, so we were doing that league, the Motivational Learning League. Um, and then, of course, along comes, just when we've got ourselves sorted out with that and doing nicely, thank you, uh, <laughs> that everything changes. And uh, the Common Core uh, is to be, uh, be held. And the 
Connecticut mastery test is, is no more. So then um, the play project that I had done um, in the meantime had been published actually and sold across America, 10 other countries. And I did a clever thing um, in the contract with the publisher that published those plays. Um, I wrote in a clause saying if you ever should stop um, actively marketing this work, all rights revert to me. Hmm. So, because I figured, well, something's going to happen maybe, and maybe the coming, this coming back to me will be a good thing, and every product has a life span, you know, it, things come in, come in and go. And so lo and behold, it came back, and lo and behold, we got the internet. So then, when, so when the Connecticut Mastery Test faded, um, I decided to pick up my first love, which was these plays, and uh, see if I could get a grant to take them digital. So the first grant I got um, was just to test that out, taking it from the page to the screen. Um, and I did it with a Spanish classic play called Life is a Dream. And I tested it out in the city in Connecticut that is at the very bottom of, in, term, in terms of test scores. And of course, Connecticut has the largest achievement gap in the country. So I was testing it. I like to test things in um, you know, challenging situations, because then I can be confident that it, it truly works. So I took it to I took uh, life as a dream um, to New Britain with uh, third, fourth, fifth graders, and I chose to test it with three teachers who'd never done a play before, <laughs> just to keep things really interesting. <laughs> and uh, and I have to say it really did go brilliantly. And um, we've we've actually on the website on bigfuneducation.org we have a little um, news clip because NBC came out to film it. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. And yeah, the kids were just remarkable. Loved being in that school, um, Title I school. And so then once I was confident of the online format, and, and just to give you a sense, a little bit of what I did from taking it to the page to the screen, was um, we got an audio track. We got actors. And um, we put the screen the script itself on screen so that you sort of couldn't help but follow along um, with the words. You found yourself silently reading. Um, and the words were clickable. And we color coded it for everyday language, um, academic language, domain specific language. So that's very much in line with the Common Core. Um, and uh, wrote quizzes that were based on the Common Core, put in um, embedded non-fiction pieces throughout, again, very Common Core, but not just slavishly kind of um, trying to please the Common Core. It really made sense, and it was the way that I taught it to begin with. Um, so we, we tested all that out, and it went well. So then the next thing I tried to do was get a grant to see, well, can we, okay, so now we've got it online, but it's not sort of a connected project, if you like. Um, can I possibly think of ways to have classrooms that are using this digital play uh, connect with each other? And, and can we do that through Google Plus? And at the time of writing the grant, honestly, Linda, I didn't even know how to do a Hangout. <laughs> it was quite a piece of fiction, my proposal. <laughs> but I thought, someone knows how to do this. I'll, I'll figure it out. I, I should think I'll figure it out. So um, so that's what I did. So then the, the one where I, I took it social was Macbeth. Um, so that's the project that you were referring to at the beginning, Macbeth Goes Social. And I have a very short power tune that um, I can play for you if you like. It's about two minutes. And uh, it just sort of lays out the process quite efficiently. Um, the whole thing was done through Google, Google Forms, um, Google Doc, uh, to get to recruit people. And when I was recruiting people, um, it was random, um, which was very frightening. Um, it's one thing being in your own state and knowing what the schools are like and you know working 
you know, you, you pretty much know what you're doing, even if you haven't met the actual teachers, you sort of know what to expect. But th I think the terrifying and, and beautifully liberating thing about Google Plus is that it's random and open, and um, you, you have to trust. You, you just have to. There's no choice but trust. And that leap of faith has been remarkable. So this project ended up being something that I did not imagine. Um, and the foundation that sponsored it in Texas were just brilliant. They just really, uh, ah, we've got Michelle. Yes, Michelle is here. Hi, Hi Michelle. Michelle. Hi. We thought you forgot Hi. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I there didn't forget, are. sorry. No, no problem. Um, Annabelle has um, just got to the Point where she's talking about Macbeth's social, how she got to um, that part of her journey. So, well, okay. So, uh, just to say that, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing and uh, <laughs> and, and just became looser. You know, I, I, as a writer, writers love to create their own worlds and control them. Um, and, and you can't do that on Google Plus when you're collaborating. You really have to be open and uh, open to randomness, which was a very frightening concept for me. Um, and especially when you're dealing with children, you know, you don't like things to be too random. That's a scary idea. Um, but it's random in a good way. Um, and we just, we, oh, I can't, well, I, I, I'm, I'm still amazed at everything that happened and the people that jumped in to do things for us. There was a videographer in Scotland, for example, who just got in touch. Oh, I've seen what you're doing. Would you like me to walk around a castle in Scotland and talk? I, I know Macbeth. I can point out, you know, architectural details and show you the view from the parapet at the top so that you get the sense of, you know, just how invulnerable Macbeth felt because everything was just so tiny down there. Would you like to see that? Like, wow, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Would you really do <laughs> that? So this guy, you know, just stepped in, did it, sent it, not a problem, and had this beautiful Scottish accent. Uh, which really enriched the project. I mean, just things that I could not have imagined, random, but beautifully random. Um, and then I happened to connect with a couple of uh, chefs. You know, that's random. <laughs> and uh, I suddenly thought, well, hang on, what could we do? And I thought, well, there's a feast in Macbeth, isn't there? And um, what did they eat? And, you know, my idea with this... The, the, the way I constructed my digital play, um, instead of calling it a table of contents, I call it points of entry because I, I can't assume that I know what anybody else knows as they come to this project. You know, I don't know if, they, if English is their first language. I don't know if they're here for the history. I don't know if they're here for the vocabulary. I don't know if it's a, you know, I don't know what kind of project the teacher has in mind who's using it. So I wanted to um, really embrace the idea that we can approach classic plays from many, many, many different places. And the idea is simply to approach it in a way that seems relevant, something you can relate to, something that takes down barriers. And what better than food? You know, we, we all just relax, don't we? It's like, yeah, I'll lean in on that one. That's okay, <laughs> including the kids. So I got these two chefs to think about it, and I got a dramaturg from the Yale School of Drama so that we were, you know, uh, flying straight with the detail, history, and, um, and we cooked up a show about cooking. And we had kids from three countries live in the Hangout making food. Uh, one was in Argentina, so they were, you know, that was a bilingual thing going on there. Uh, one was in England, and one was a Title I third grade class in Maine. That's random. <laughs> and, and it just worked, because everybody had the right spirit, you know? Everyone was just going, let's just see what we can do. And, um, and trying to make, and just being supportive. I talked all the way through that project about what an improvisation is. And, uh, and, and I had to live that too. I had to walk the walk. And, and as I was saying before to Linda, that's hard for me because I 
I, I like to have things all planned out. You know, I've I've written textbooks and things. I like chapters. I'm used to that kind of thing. I've been in educational publishing. So um, I just said, no, this isn't like that. This is not a linear, I'll tell you what you're doing, and then I'll tell you what you're doing, and then I'll tell No, we're not doing that. Um, we're just going to do this. We're all going to show up as you do in an improv, and we're going to be present, and we're going to listen to the others, and we're going to support each other, and our goal is to make each other look good. And those are the rules. That's it. We're just there to do that. We show up, we make each other look good, and we listen. And um, it, it really went well. I think it was more of a stretch for the teachers than it was for the kids. Um, it was funny. The teachers, you know, the little uh, little hesitation here and there, and nervousness about will I get the tech right or wrong, and and that sort of thing. Um, I started Macbeth Goes Social with what something I called um, Hello Hangouts because I wanted to meet every single child in the project, and there were just over 200 kids in it from six countries. Um, and I wanted to meet them all. And the reason I wanted to meet with them was it it made it personal. And I said, this is a true collaboration. And when you collaborate with someone, you, you have a little moment at the beginning where you get to know each other. So I said, I want to know what you already enjoy doing. And maybe we can connect that to this work. And uh, you know, we did this in um, May, June, end of the school year, and one of the classes was 12th grade, for instance. Now, you know, trying to get 12th grade kids, and it was Title I school again, but they didn't care about Shakespeare so much, you know, they weren't really interested. So I really had to, I felt, go the extra mile and find out what they're interested in. And one thing I said to them, for instance, this one boy, I said, what do you like doing when no one's telling you what to do? And uh, he said, uh, I like tattoos. I like designing tattoos. So I said, well, would you do me a favor and create a tattoo for Macbeth? And I said, and also, there's a couple of murderers in the play. And he was like, what? <laughs> Sounds all right. And so, you know, and so on and so forth. And we brought the kids in and we found out all sorts of um, wonderful things. One child in South Carolina, I said to the same question, I said to him, what do you like doing when no one's telling you what to do? And uh, he was a bit shocked by that, and he said, um, voices. I said, really? What do you mean by that? Uh, he said, I'm a voice artist. And I said, well, I love that. I love those two words, but I still don't really know what you mean. So he said, well, do you want me to do George Bush? Or Donald Duck, or was it Mickey Mouse? I think Mickey Mouse or George Bush. And so then I know I knew he was joking around with me. And my own son is a comedian. I love love comics. So I said, well, that's a tough question. I've got to think about that one. Um, so I said, all right, George Bush. Mm -hmm. And you know, he went into the most amazing uh, improv, really nuanced, um, e extraordinary performance in the voice of George Bush. And uh, we all fell apart. That viral, that Hello uh, South Carolina went video went somewhat viral by my standards. I think by the next day it was like 300 views. And I said to the teacher, "Why, you know, why so much interest in it, you know?" And uh, she said, "Well, um, that child doesn't usually speak very much in class, and uh, we were we were really surprised." So. It made me realize that there was tremendous power in this Google Hangout tool. Um, and tremendous power, perhaps, in the one-on-one. -on -one. And since I was, so anyway, just to finish that story, I said to the teacher, do you think that he would come back and work one-on-one -on -one with my son, who's a comedian, and will do, he will coach him, he's a comedian and actor in New York, and he'll coach him to do the only funny speech in the whole play, the Porter's speech. You know, he gets woken up early and it's like, whoa, what's all this noise? You know, can't people ever sleep through the night anymore? And, you know, he's this grumpy kind of funny character. I said, 
let's see if we can get him to do it in a George Bush voice, as if it's a polit he's at a political rally and, you know, all the rest of it. So she said, well, I'll ask him. And he said, yeah, he would do it. So, you know, it was a small miracle, I thought. And uh, you just see this person, 12th grader, just come alive, you know, he's just coming alive. And so I, you know, that, that really, that really um, made a huge impression on me. And when the whole project was over, I thought, I think that's, that's what I've got to keep thinking about because I see a lot of educational use of the Hangouts, um, particularly in connected classrooms, etc. Uh, beautifully done. Um, the format is usually there are uh, there's a whole classroom and there's perhaps one or two grown-ups and most of the children don't speak and a lot of great stuff happens in that format but I thought if I'm going to do something new and, and keep playing with this tool and see what we can do with it I'm going to do something different and I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one. Uh, community for kids and give more kids the one-on-one -on -one experience because it's powerful and it's memorable and because we can do it let's try so then the next community um, just sort of walk you through the the, the narrative of, of where I've been and where I'm going um, and I think it was only about four weeks ago that I decided it would be um, a reading uh, community that I would do one-on-one -on -one, Google Plus volunteers uh, matched up with through their teachers matched up with kids who don't get enough one-on-one -on -one reading uh, experience so I created you know the beautiful thing again again with Google Plus is you can sort of throw these communities up against the wall and and send out a couple of posts and and see if anybody else you know is excited about something and um, within about three posts I had over a hundred people join the community so I thought alright I, I think we are, we're onto something because I mean even a good idea can't work without you know without the people behind it so um, yeah I think I said something like would you volunteer would you volunteer to read with a kid without leaving Google Plus you know you can volunteer without leaving Google Plus and uh, I think that 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 was the right way to sort of present it. So now I think we have about 180 people, and um, I've organised it not by um, well, I should I should go back and perhaps say one other thing. It's not really on the agenda. I won't go on too much. But I also it, when I was doing the plays, when I the first play that I did, the Spanish classic play with the kids. These kids in a Title I um, inland school, but in a coastal state, Connecticut. I, w I went to them and I said, uh, how many kids have been to the beach? None of them. So I thought, okay, so because at the beginning of a play, you've got the setting. You know, you've got to give a real context and a real connection to the setting. I thought, wow. So these kids really don't have much context or experience for traveling. So I had heard of... Um, Mystery, uh, mystery Skype sessions. Do you know those, Linda? Yes. Yeah. We actually, that's how we got together, I think. That's how you oh, and I it? met. Through that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I thought, well, I love that idea. Can we do it with Google Plus? So I set up Mystery Hangout community, and I set it up with, um, with regions, you know, geographical regions. And, and you know how it works. The two teachers get together. They don't tell the kids. And then they come on and they say, you've got to guess where the other kids are from. And they have to, you know, use some strategic thinking and maybe use some Google tools, etc. So we found a classroom in Eastern Europe because the Spanish play, although it's Spanish, you know, this was a lot for eight, nine, ten-year-olds to take in in a Title I school, bilingual. All right, you've got a Spanish play, but it's not set in Spain. <laughs> By the way, you know, although he's Spanish, he didn't just write about Spain. He set it in Eastern Europe. We're talking about Russia, Poland. So um, we did a mystery hangout with kids in Ukraine, and uh, that was just brilliant. That was really fun. But the way that I set that community up now, it just runs on its own. People are connecting all the time. They don't even know who set it up or anything. It's not relevant. 
it just works. So that's sort of how I want to, to do it with um, Reading Without Borders. Um, and I'm trying to get people to come to the community, join the community, volunteers to write a little bit about themselves and then level up and record themselves in a hangout on air just reading a little bit of something that they care about by way of showcasing themselves so that then teachers can look at all these little um, sort of vignettes if you like and say oh I think she would go well with you know Jackie or whatever or you know you just get a sense of someone quite quickly in a hangout so um, and, and it's a sense of trust if you're going to match up you know some stranger with a child you want to get a sense of them <coughs> so I thought well that that's quite good and again it won't involve me every five minutes and then um, we suggest that the teacher reaches out or the the volunteer reaches out to the teacher and uh, they do a private hangout off air just to get you know just reassure them each other that this is a good match and then we want the um, the volunteer to read with a child for 20 minutes 20 minutes in a week and the second session it's on the child to bring something to read and it has to relate to what the last week's reading was about so it just gives a little bit of structure it gives a little bit of ownership to the child so that they're active they take responsibility they do a little bit of critical thinking they connect one piece with another and um, and they reverse roles so that they, you know, one week they're really listening, one week they're, they're reading, and that the piece that's read by the volunteer is online and available to the child so that they may turn around and read it to the class or who knows what they're going to do. <coughs> but um, in talking about this, I have a, um, a professor of, um, an adjunct professor of literacies at the University of Connecticut who's interested in what I've been doing. She actually had a piece published about Macbeth no, about Life is a Dream, the Spanish play, um, in the, what was it called, Connecticut Librarians Association Journal or some, something like that. You probably know the, the association, Linda, but anyway, some librarian journal. And um, she, uh, she's interested in what we're doing, and I've been talking with her with, with reading about Reading Without Borders, and she and another professor actually said they'd like to make the volunteering um, a required assignment for their student teachers because it would be a very useful experience for them to get some hands-on virtual teaching experience that will be recorded because when, when the volunteer meets with the kid it's going to be in a hangout on air so it'll be recorded and that's another way of keep, you know, keeping the transparency level complete. <clears throat> and um, so that was something that I didn't foresee um, and I've been told since that for example in New York State um, it's, a, it's required for all te training teachers to have a portfolio, a digital portfolio so that for New York State if I can start getting the word out there they may think oh this is something that we'd like to do so imagine, imagine what we can tap into here and uh, and how the kids can can benefit and they can then you know when mum and dad say what did you do at school today they can show them the the YouTube oh hello we've got Christine yes hi Christine <laughs> welcome <laughs> so I think you know there's there's lots of ripples there's a great home school connection there I think there's you know fantastic perhaps application with schools of education um, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about it. And Google has shown Google in Education has shown interest in what I'm doing and been really supportive. And um, so I've got fingers crossed that I'm, I might, might, might get a grant um, that will support this work and help me. Um, Google's interested in focusing on STEM. Um, so I've been recruiting um, people on Google who you know have depth of knowledge in science and technology and engineering and mathematics and uh, and that you know they just love kids so they're happy to read with them and tomorrow no today <laughs> it's today uh, three o'clock this afternoon 
Um, we're going to do our first Hangout on Air with the people who've shown a lot of enthusiasm for it. And um, we'll just bat around the ideas and, and see what comes out of it. Um, and we've got some engineers on the panel that are going to come. It's fantastic. I'm so excited about it. So it all really came from the seeing this child um, come alive in a Hangout in a way that was, you know, never seen before in his entire school career. Um, so yeah, usually it's the kids that give me the next idea. So that's that's sort of the the whole arc of it. Sorry for talking t too long. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful story um, that you're telling us, and you are a pioneer. Uh, not only do you have the ideas, you work with people, and that's a real skill. I mean, the fact that you've gotten all these people to help you, professors and Google. Um, is quite amazing. So I, I think we can learn a lot from your experiences. So thanks for all you do for that. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to add to um, Annabelle. I really loved how you said that um, you realized, you know, that everybody involved in the project came with different points of entry. And I was thinking that's so true in our classrooms too. You know, the prior knowledge we're not always aware of the different prior knowledge our kids have. So by keeping your projects um, improvisational, you really kept the doors open for the strengths, like you're saying, the child who was the voice artist. I think that's so neat. I love that. It's a powerful lesson, I think, for all of us as educators, even in our own classrooms. But I like how you transferred it to the Hangouts classroom Thanks. piece, too. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's been wonderful seeing how these different groups interact with this play. I mean, the we had a group of Italians, and they were 15 years old, and their, their teacher was on it really bright and early um, before we really went full, you know, full throttle with it. And uh, she loves um, collaboration across countries, so she was really engaged, and she said, ah, Oh, I didn't even mention this, but part of the grant was to have the play that I'd written translated into Chinese, Arabic, um, Spanish. That was it. And um, I, I was interested in, in multilingual performance as well. And um, anyway, the Italian teacher said, so would, why isn't it in Italian? <laughs> I said, oh, that's a very good question. I said, I'd love it to be in Italian. So she said, well, would you like the students to translate it? <laughs> How is that? That's random in the most beautiful way imaginable. So uh, I said, yes, you bet I would. So we created a shared Google Doc. I literally watched these kids translate it. They would put in comments for me and comments for their teacher. And uh, I was a little bit involved in it, in, in explaining it, you know, different things. Um, and, uh, and again, with uh, the, the Spanish version came from just someone on Google Plus volunteering to translate it. She happened to be, you know, very fluently bilingual. And she collaborated with a local teacher, elementary school teacher as well. And uh, so we had really fun hangouts. She's saying, what is a rat without a tail? <laughs> We don't have them in Spain. <laughs> it was just, it was just a lot of fun. I wished some of that had been on air because I think the kids would have really had fun with us wrestling with the script. Um, but we got um, so the so the Italian kids. Oh, they made this amazing eight-minute film. They went out into the woods near them and they climbed up. And the witches got up. They did all the makeup. They learned everything. It was so cute. We had a we had a hangout about how did you do that <laughs> hangout, and uh, <laughs> I said to this, uh, they're so beautiful these children, and I said, how did you know how to do that makeup? It was so professional. She said, everything I know, I I learned from YouTube. <laughs> It was so great. So she'd done all this professional makeup. I mean, if you see this clip, it's absolutely incredible. Um, so, yeah, we had the making of, and, and all of that was completely unexpected. Um, I did have a shared, you know, what did I call it? A, a planning guide or learning guide or something, anyway. And uh, I did put up, you know, here's some suggested activities, because after they've read it, 
uh, a few times, and, and we've done the Hello Hangout, then the, each class started doing their own project. But I said, you don't have to do this. Um, what I'm suggesting is just a bouncing off point, or you could do it, you know. And um, so they each did their own. And the Italians put in two other languages in theirs as well. So, so it was a trilingual performance. Um, and making of, oh, s stunning, stunning work that was. I uh, really enjoyed that. So, um, and my partner in all of this uh, is my, my real life partner as well, my husband, and he went to the Yale School of Drama, and he um, was, did you ever get Weekly Reader in Hawaii? Do you know that? Okay, so he was the executive editor of that. And, uh, and he also created a magazine for Scholastic. So the two of us have been in educational publishing for, hate to say it, but 30 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, pretty awful or wonderful. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so he came into some of these hangouts and, uh, you know, he was really impressed by those kids doing that. And uh, you know, we just did lots of, lots of different things. We did a, um, we got Lady Macbeth from my digital play, uh, the actress's voice that they'd all heard many times because they played this, you know, this digital play over. And I said, uh, "Who would like to do a table reading with Lady Macbeth? We'll get her in. We'll get her into the hangout. She can read with you." So we ended up doing that with the kids, uh, fifth graders in Argentina. That was, that was so much fun. They they really took it seriously. They were amazing. And then we had a Q and A at the end. And I said, uh, "Now." You can either ask questions to Lady Macbeth, who's sitting right here, or you can ask them of the actress, Juliana Harris, who's also sitting right here. <laughs> and uh, just to sort of, you know, give them that, that um, clarification of, of point of view, I guess. And, uh, and they were so cute. They came up, and the first question was, uh, Lady Macbeth, where were you born? And so she looked at me. She wasn't expecting that. And it's again, you know, improv. I don't know. Just say what makes sense. And uh, so she said, "I was born in Scotland." So, oh, very good. So the next kid came up and said, uh, "Juliana Harris, where were you born?" <laughs> so then she told, you know, where she really was born. And uh, oh, we just had we had so much fun. She ended up singing a song with them. <laughs> So yeah, good times. I have I have a grant to do two more plays now from uh, a regional bank here in New England um, has very generously given me a grant to do um, two digital plays. These are for kindergarten and first grade, and then second and third. And I wrote plays, very short plays, like ten minutes or under. Uh, based on poems that are in the, I think it's Appendix B, isn't it, in the Common Core, where they do the suggested, yeah. So I took a, two poems out of there and I wrote plays uh, around the poem. And uh, so one is called Who Has Seen the Wind? And uh, in that one, I managed to get, well, the guy that came out from NBC to film Life is a Dream was so impressed with the project that he said, could I be in one of your plays? So, random. <laughs> it wasn't even on Google Plus. That was real life random. Um, I said, yeah. So he plays Dan Dan the Weatherman in uh, Who Has Seen the Wind, and then I managed. I thought, oh, well, that raised my my uh, my nerve to say, well, maybe I could ask someone from ABC, news anchor from ABC in Connecticut, to play Newsy Susie. So I asked her, and she said yes. So she came and she recorded um, what fun that was. So that's a great, fun little play, um, and that's going to become available in September for kids. And then the next play that I'm doing, and this one I'm going to do in um, something I'm calling Hangout Theatre. I decided that uh, when I learned that when you record and it goes to YouTube, you can actually download the audio track, I thought, ah, that's where I could get then the soundtrack for my digital play. So now I can cast a wider net because the next play that I'm doing is um, the owl, the pussycat, and the poetic detectives, a little play that I've written around the owl and the pussycat. 
And it has to have British voices, has to have British voices. And that had been a stumbling block for me. I wrote the play and I thought, I don't know, I think I'll figure it out. And along comes Google+, Plus, along comes downloading the audio. So um, I put out a casting call. Ha! What a nerve. I put out a casting call on Google+. Plus Again, let's just throw it out there. You know, if it doesn't work, it's just a post that goes by. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You know, you can, you can try and fail and keep going. Um, <clears throat> and so I thought, well, what if? What if? I got them. And so um, lo and behold, within 24 hours, I had the play cast with uh, professional British actors. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Um, one of them was in, I don't know if you ever saw that film, Calendar Girls. Did you see that? It's, it's a fun film. Anyway, he was in that. He was in Doctor Who. He was in As Time Goes By. Um, we, we, uh, we got some really good people. So that, we're going to record it, the reading of it, in a hangout so that it's the making of a digital play. And then we'll edit the video to make it, you know, make sense and not be so long drawn out. Um, and one of the actors is, I deliberately undercast, you know, I, I cast one guy in two roles so that kids can see that people will do two different voices. Ah, he thought it was two people, it's not. Um, and uh, then I can edit the, uh, the audio and make that part of the, the actual digital play that will go to the schools. So that's coming up, I don't know, in a month or two. We'll, we'll try that out for size. <laughs> I um, wanted to mention, you keep saying random. I don't think it's random. I think you're a magnet for creativity, <laughs> Annabelle, because you are so creative yourself. People are just latching on to you like crazy. I'm tired just listening to all of the creative <laughs> things you do. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I love, too, how, how you try it. You just say, well, what if? You know, what if this would work? I love that. I think that's something that more of us need to be willing to ask and try. Very inspiring. very inspiring. I didn't used to be that way. I, I was. I'm very, uh, pretty anxious. I, I, I'd, I'm on the anxious side actually. But I really, Google Plus has really empowered me. I, you know, I have to tell you, um, it really has taught me that it's not the end of the world if something doesn't work. Well, we were in one hangout. Where was I doing? Oh, we had three people from Glasgow say they would record. Um, the opening of my uh, no the the what was it yeah the op no the opening of the original script um, the first few lines you know when when shall we three meet again and all of that the thunder and the lightning and um, so they recorded that and then I wanted to play it in a hangout with those kids and then have the kids after having heard it with a Glasgow accent see how that affected them because I said I just want the witches are weird that's the word that keeps coming up let's be weird. Um, so let's listen to another accent, that'll help, and then let's just be what we can be. And uh, I, it was, I was not juggling my tabs and share screen well, and the whole, you know, I shut the whole show down, you know, brilliant, well done Annabelle. And, you know, in, past, in the past that would have really, really deeply troubled me uh, to be on display as having failed so miserably. But because it's Google Plus, I thought, oh, I'll get them back. I'll get them back. Hang on, click, click. And we, we got them back. And then it made me laugh. And I started saying to the, uh, to the teacher, she was great. Well, it does help when you've got great teachers. I got really lucky. Um, I mean, most teachers are great, but these were, these were super great. Mm -hmm. um, but she, we started laughing. And I said, well, you know, watch the professional. And uh, she was laughing, and I said, but you know, of course, that there's a um, uh, whole story about Macbeth being sort of haunted. And I said, you know, we probably, and the kids were like, what, what? Uh, there's a theatrical sort of um, uh, law that you're not allowed to say the word that begins with M inside the theater. And if you do, you know, you have to do this, this, and this. And so it just turned into another another opportunity to learn something. Yeah, it was all right. I'm sure I'll do things and then it'll be dreadful, but and then I'll go ah, and then I'll get over it. <laughs> you are amazing. I wanted to point out that Christine is here. She's uh, first time here, so I wanted to make sure we got to talk with Christine. Hi, Christine. 
Hi, I'm just kind of listening. I came in kind of late because I couldn't find where you were at because I have like five different accounts <laughs> with Google for different things. But thank you for the invitation. Sure. And where do you? Where are you? Where do you? I'm I'm with Michelle. I'm at Holly Cool Elementary. I'm a first grade teacher. So oh, nice. I'm trying to learn this Google thing too. There's so much. Yes, there's so yes. much that it offers, and it's just overwhelming at times, but there's a lot of powerful tools that can be used. So yeah. Michelle was telling me there's other ways that I need to branch out besides what I've been doing in the past. So, <laughs> okay, Michelle, you're going to be the lead. <laughs> She's a great leader, so I'm sure she'll steer you Except in the right direction. Except she goes on motor speed sometimes. you got to catch up with her thoughts and her... I know. Go-go like, mode. I know. It's like mode. She's got too many things in the back of her mind at one time. <laughs> well, that's what librarians do, you know. They give you all the ideas, and then they're all, they have more ideas. It's all, that's how it works. Oh, yeah, Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> and actually, Annabelle, you just gave me another idea, too. I had a similar experience as you... Um, this year, I was um, our classes were invited to participate in a volcano virtual field trip, and we weren't the coordinators of it, but we were invited to participate. And it was kind of like you said, they had an original plan, and um, they kind of planned out the weeks. But we also improvised a little as we went along, and we asked some what if questions. And I think that made the hangout and the whole experience just become even more amazing. But I noticed the same thing you did, that it was us as adults and um, the kids seated in front of the TV, you know, the computer screen. They could see themselves, but it wasn't personalized. And so um, I was talking with my nephew who was involved with in one of the other schools, and he said, it's just like watching TV. How come I can't talk with another child? And so I was kind of wrecking my brain, too, just like you were saying, how can it become more personalized? And as you were talking, I love your idea about the reading because I think that's um, so crucial. Our kids need um, help with that and a right. mentor, someone who can listen to them. But then as I was listening to you, I thought, what about all of the schools who are doing their 20% time? And wouldn't it be neat if the kids at the, in these different classes could get up and could just share what their project is they were doing for 20%? And probably if we research it, someone is already doing it in Hangouts. But... I think it'd be so neat to hear from the kids themselves. What are their passions? Just like your tattoo artist and the voice artist. Right. What are your passions and how are you pursuing it? So that right. would be kind of a neat hangout too. So I'm Definitely. waiting for you to start it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do believe that there is a 20% community, uh, perhaps even two. Um, and there are people who are, you know, really thoroughly immersed in that. I love that. Oh, what a dream. I think that's such a great idea. Um, I, 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 as a mother, uh, for sure, and an educator also, but as a mother, you know, I, I've taken my job as, as trying to make sure that my kids find their passion um, and, and giving them, you know, free time, allowing them to be bored, etc., etc., you know, um, and just play with sticks and, and just imagine stuff for themselves and uh, I think, sorry yeah, go ahead. I agree with you no no I was just gonna say and you know my fear is that in school we're just not um, and they we're not allowed to do as much of that because everything needs to be more data driven and um, there's so much pressure on teachers to um, prepare their kids for the standardized test but I think that the experiences that um, Macbeth goes social created for these kids um, are lasting and memorable and I think it's so many essential skills the kids need you know the collaboration and the communication and how much more rich their reading of the play was because it um, reached out and included so many that global classroom piece you know so yeah, yeah that's, that's what we try to do memorable memorable sociable projects yeah, and a lot of the, the nitty-gritty work takes place off screen, but then when they come on screen, they're really prepared. They've got something to say that they care about and that they know about. So it's not it doesn't all happen on screen, but they're motivated to do a lot more off screen then in right. their own time. Um, yeah, definitely. Did you want me to show the little powtoon, the two-minute powtoon, or are we... Sure, go for it. Let, let me time. try 
I'll try. And and I can also dip into the actual play if you want to see that. At least I think I can. I um, like your um, photobombing dog there. Oh, is he? <laughs> He's doing the same. <laughs> oh, that's Panda the dog. Um, hang on, let me see if I can do this. What grade level is this? This one is... Um, Mm, Macbeth goes social. What was it? Um, I think we have it listed as. Well, I know I've done it with with grades three through twelve, so I never get too hung up on specifically what it is because they always bring their own um, their own eyes to it. Hang on, what am I doing wrong now? Well, while you're doing that, I wanted to mention to people that um, a lot of the things you mentioned, like um, the hangouts you did, we put them in the show notes so that people can um, explore more about what you've done. And the show notes are on my lower third here, uh, GR42 notes, a bit.ly link. Oops, sorry, it's wrong. Should be a bit.ly link. Let me change that. Why, why isn't that going, Linda? What am I doing? I'm spacing out. I can see you. You can see it now. You can see it? Uh -huh. Oh, great. Okay. Shall I play it? Shall I make it well, big? I try I should. Okay. Let's have a go. ask you, um, Annabelle, about uh, the grants. Now, so if someone wanted to do, <clears throat> you know, something creative, is it easy to do grants or any recommendations there for them? Um, what do you What do you mean using using my plays? Do you mean, or do you mean just in general getting a grant? Just in general, if someone wanted to do something creative uh, with um, hangouts. Um, uh, was it easy getting, I don't know, maybe some tips for people? It takes a lot of digging around. Um, I think people are interested in seeing um, social learning happening and using these tools to connect. So I think they can be found, um, it, but it, you know, it does take a bit of time. You have to, you have to really, I mean, I... I only apply for ones where I think that this is a perfect match, and uh, and then I, I got lucky with them. Um, 
it helps if you've got a relationship, it helps if, if they're like a local bank or something like that. I mean, the, the, the bank that's sponsoring my next two plays for kindergarten, first, second, third, um, mm. they're wonderful and they encourage their employees to be volunteers. So we are, they're, they're asking the employees of, of the bank in, I think it's four states, to become volunteers so in Reading Without Borders. So I'm hoping that a lot of those people can talk about math and real world math with the kids and read pieces, you know, about that. So um, I think it's always an individual experience, you know, just based on if you know someone, of course, that's the old story. It does help. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that, w that those of us who are, who are here at the forefront in Google+, it, it's still very new, you know, although we've been on it for a while. Um, it, this is all still very new to most people and cutting edge. So um, yeah, I, I think there there is a good possibility for getting grants. I really do. Nice. And I think well, everyone knows collaboration and and communication skills are absolutely you know the heart and soul of the Common Core. For one thing, and you know it doesn't even matter about the Common Core that label so much as. Anyone with any common sense knows that that's true. That's what kids in the in the world today need to be able to do. They need to be able to speak and listen in real time, in an articulate way, and be persuasive. And uh, yeah, so all, all of those things can be accomplished. And and a lot of work has to be accomplished in in virtual video format now. So everyone knows that's a practical skill to have. So yeah, I think I think the business is. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to, to get some more uh, supporters for, for Reading Without Borders and, uh, and then maybe they'll come in and they'll see what the great stuff that everybody's doing. Yes, um, and there's that hangout tomorrow you said at 3 o'clock, is that Eastern Standard Time or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that would be 9 o'clock our time I believe. And mm -hmm. Alex who was on our um, hangout a couple weeks ago will be on there I see. Alex yeah. Ricky Gonzalez. Oh, She's great. very involved with uh, communication. So yeah, it's good she's to see. Really smart girl, isn't she? She's so awesome. brilliant. Yeah. And funny. Yes, yeah, she is funny. <laughs> Does anybody else on the panel have questions of Annabelle? We're headed toward the top of the hour. It seems like it hasn't been that long, but. What is the topic for tomorrow night? Tomorrow night we do weekly. Okay. Yeah, so, but uh, Michelle knows next week, I, but I'm not sure she can talk about it yet. Okay. It's a surprise, but you want to tune in. So I'm going to invite you, Christine. you got to come. <laughs> On Tuesday, Tuesday night, right? It'll be next Tuesday. Every okay. Tuesday. If you want to do a regular, be a regular on the panel, um, Christine. We always encourage that. I'm trying to catch up with um, Ed Mix Plate. I was gone for like the whole summer. Uh, uh, I was in the mainland on several trips, so oh, I'm cool. trying to play catch up. <laughs> yes. Well, the cool thing about it is um, both programs, Google Rocks and Edmix, EdTechMix Plate, have the um, archives. You know, the yeah. playlist. So that's the coolest it's thing. It's great for it. those that forget and need to review. <laughs> right. Right. Stop smiling, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, Annabelle, thank you so much. My goodness. Our paths have crossed several times over the uh, just the past couple of years. Um, and um, feel it really feel enriched by you and inspired by you and keep um, keep what you're doing, you know, um, and we'll watch and hopefully get little bits of um, things that we can do um, and really appreciate you doing all the pioneer work. I'd love to collaborate with you guys and you know we can test out the new plays for the little kids maybe or you know who knows. Um, it'll well, be well I definitely want to do the reading without borders and um, maybe involve our kids in that somehow. So that would be great. We'll see how that happens, yeah. I, I, li I like that about the community is that you can tailor make it to whatever you want to accomplish. Exactly. So I think I think it'll be fantastic. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just have to let us know what you need, and we'll, you know, we can bear that in mind for sure. For instance, I'd love to have the, our kids read to other kids. Mm -hmm. and I, is that a possibility? Because I know you said um, generally adults reading to kids. Mm -hmm. Could it be older kids reading to younger kids? Or? Definitely, definitely. I, I love that idea. And uh, and especially when you have a community that, that's called Without Borders, you can't start putting up arbitrary walls, can you? Right. So uh, I, I definitely love that idea. And also we've got people already volunteering to do it in Spanish and Portuguese and Italian. I'll just toss that one out there. So yes, other languages. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I love that mentoring. I mean, the 12th graders are, so, are almost grown-ups in the eyes of third graders. I mean, they feel so special to get the attention of a 12th grader. I mean, that's brilliant. That makes their month, doesn't it? I'd love that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. I'll commit then to um, looking into that for our school for sure. Okay, so we're at the top of the hour. Thank you again, Annabelle. For coming and it was Chad I think had to drop out he's been going in and out so thank you Chad for uh, sticking with us and wonderful of course to have Michelle every week and um, especially wonderful to have Christine for the first time we love to have variety at the bottom um, and have listeners tune in and participate so that's what we're all about and this is our first meet we met Annabelle Howard so I'm thinking this would be a cool um, thing to do. In fact, um, yeah, that be one of our. Uh, that could be one of our series. Um, we have share fest, which have been very popular. We really like that um, share fest. So maybe we'll have a different thread of meet certain people. And pleasure to have more people meet you, Annabelle. Oh and, well, uh, great pleasure for me to meet to to meet uh, mm -hmm. Michelle and to, to speak with you again, Linda, always. Yes, yes. And it's almost it's o 2 o'clock Wednesday for you. So again, thank you so much for coming at an ungodly hour to be with us. <laughs> wow. I can post um, my children now that I was up at 2. Uh, yes, yes. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> so I'm going to stop the broadcast. You're, you're all welcome to stay. Um, but okay. we'll go ahead and um, we'll say aloha for now. Aloha. Yeah. See you Aloha. next week. Aloha. Aloha.